Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Builders. Today we are going to talk about nine reasons you miss Q. Now, everybody has had this situation during their pool career, whether it's amateur or professional. Uh, everybody's been here. And um, today we're going to talk about nine ways to prevent it and 10 reasons it happens. Number 10 is a mystery. Let's get started. The number one reason guys miss Q is chalk. If you miss Q in a pool hall, in an APA match, just about anywhere in the world, uh, somebody in the background is going to say, chalk is cheap. Well, the reality is, yes, chalk is free. Uh, some people say chalk is free. Some people say chalk is cheap. It depends on if they've ever bought chalk in their life. Uh, but the um, reality is when people miss Q, the number one reason is chalk, but it's usually the number one excuse. It's not the number one reason. A lot of times people don't realize why they miss Q'd, but quality chalk is the number one reason. I'm going to leave a link to um, some of the best chalk on the market in the description, but if you're not chalking up after every shot, you're doing something wrong. I know you guys will see me running balls and there's times that I might go even two shots without chalking up. Uh, one of the reasons is I use very high quality chalk and I get into a rhythm and there are times that I fail to chalk up, uh, but I'm using chalk that stays on my cue for a very long period of time. But you should get into the habit of chalking up after every shot. So make sure you're using chalk, make sure you're using quality chalk Masters is free most places you go because it's cheap and it's cheap because it's not the best chalk on the market. So number one, make sure you're chalking up and do it on a regular basis. The next reason people will miss Q is they've got chalk on their Q, but they don't have a properly shaped tip. A properly shaped tip should have the curvature of a nickel or a dime. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. It means if I, if I take a dime and I hold it up flat against my Q-tip, the curve of my Q is going to be the same as a dime. So um, some people use a nickel curvature. I use a dime. Most high-end players are going to use a dime because it allows you to put more English on the ball, even though you lose a little bit of control versus a nickel. But as you move up, you're probably going to yield towards the dime. The way I keep the curvature perfect on my tip is with this. It's called Last Forever. It is a Q shaper, Q tip shaper. And it is something that you guys should look into. I will leave a link in the description below. I've turned a lot of um, clients onto this. And I did a video where I, I highlighted this, this one item. Uh, it is something that you should keep in mind that you want to use something. It doesn't have to be this tool, but use a tool to make sure your tip is in the right curvature at all times. If it's not, that's going to cause you to miss Q. Uh, there are guys that don't know anything about having the proper shape uh, to their tip. And hopefully I'll do a video on how to shape your tip and help you guys out with that. But in the meantime, make sure you have a properly shaped quality tip, which brings me to number two and a half. Uh, if you don't have a quality tip, bad things are going to happen. Uh, in most cases, you want to have a soft to medium, multi-layered leather tip. Um, they aren't cheap. A uh, good quality tip is probably going to be about 20 bucks on up to 30 or more. And uh, it's going to cost you a few dollars to get it on your queue. But just like having cheap tires on a Ferrari, it's not going to do you any good to have a bad tip on your nice queue. So two and a half, get a quality tip and take good care of it with a good tip tool. Reason number three is going to be about your bridge. Uh, if you don't have a good, steady, stable bridge, then you can often find yourself miscuing. Now, one of the things that happens is we get ourselves into situations where we have to shoot over balls. So even guys who normally have a quality bridge uh, will find themselves in situations like this where they have to shoot over a ball and as a result, they will end up miscuing. So make sure you practice your bridge. Nobody has ever told you that before, right? 
if you need to jack up over a ball and you can't keep your hand sturdy on the table, then you don't have a good bridge. It is a good idea to practice shooting balls where you have to shoot over another ball because the situation comes up very often. The closer you are to being a dead flat beginner, the more often it's going to happen. Advanced players pay attention to situations like this and avoid them by stopping the cue ball there or there. If your cue is moving around on your bridge or your bridge is not sturdy, then you need to address that issue and practice shooting shots where you have to shoot over balls. So number three, make sure you have a good sturdy bridge. Number four is also about your bridge. Let's say you've gotten your sturdy bridge down. You've practiced shooting over balls. You've developed either a open bridge that's firm or a, a closed bridge that's firm. But now you find yourself miscuing occasionally because your bridge hand is too far from the cue ball. You have to understand that the further you are away from the cue ball, the less accuracy you're gonna have during your shot. So in some cases, you guys are going to need to move your hand closer to the cue ball, not just to keep from miscuing, but to give yourself additional accuracy. Now, some of the mistakes that we're going to talk about are the result of people watching professionals play. If you watch a lot of professionals play, they have very long bridges on a lot of shots. I know I have a pretty long bridge on my, my long draw shots. My, my bridge actually changes depending on the shot, obviously. But I see people trying to emulate uh, the professionals that they see that have what appear to be very long bridges. A couple things you should know about those long bridges. Number one, uh, very often on TV or on YouTube, the length of that bridge is actually an optical illusion. Uh, what looks like a 12 inch bridge is actually maybe a six or seven inch bridge. Uh, the other thing that you should keep in mind is that that bridge uh, may be extended for a particular reason that you don't know about but your bridge length should be based on your abilities, the type of shot that you're taking, your aiming, and a number of different things. So don't get lost in my bridge should be four inches long or six inches long, or eight inches long. It should be the length that helps you execute the shot at a comfortable distance that works for you. And if you're miscuing, one of the things you wanna look at is the length of your bridge. Let's look at the next item. <laughs> item number five that might be causing you to miss cue. It could be that you are dropping your shoulder. Um, this usually happens when guys are trying to shoot long draw shots. Uh, they, um, they feel that they need to put extra effort into the ball, that they need to um, follow through longer, uh, a number of different things. Uh, so they will get into their stance. They have a good stance, but as they execute that shot, they drop their, out their shoulder. So what happens is they end up dropping their shoulder and in effect, the cue moves from its contact point on the cue ball. You're already hitting the cue ball extremely low on a draw shot. So if you drop your shoulder, then you are going to have some issues. So item number six kind of relates to item number five. Uh, we talked about dropping your shoulder. One of the things that people will do uh, is they're conscious of keeping their shoulder in place, but they will drop their elbow. So during a shot, especially a long draw shot, sometimes guys will drop their elbow, which of course also causes their shoulder to drop uh, during the shot. And dropping your elbow or having your elbow out of position, left or right of where it should be on that pendulum will also cause you to miss cue. So keep in mind, shoulders in place, elbows not dropping, anything that drops and moves your contact point on the cue ball from where you are actually aiming during your warm-up strokes is going to cause you to miss cue. So all of these things work in coordination with each other and things that you need to be aware of. It should be said that a lot of times people are miss cueing and they don't know why. Oh, I got a bad tip on my cue. I've got bad chalk or whatever the case. Usually, as I said at the beginning, it is not necessarily bad chalk. It is not necessarily a bad tip. It is bad fundamentals. And we immediately go to the tip or the, the chalk because it's something else that we can blame other than ourselves. But in most cases, 
when you are miscuing frequently, uh, it is something to do with your fundamentals, not with chalk and not with a tip. Those are very common things, but if your tip is bad, how come you're not miscuing every time you take a, a shot with English? If your um, chalk is bad, how come you're not miscuing every time you take a shot with English? So keep these things in mind that you may think that is one thing, but it's something else. Be conscious of all of these things, and the best way to do it is to videotape yourself shooting. So here's one that usually affects higher ranked players versus lower ranked players, and that is shooting beyond the limits of the cue ball when you're applying English. Those of you who are advanced enough that you're using um, inside, outside English, left, right, running English, reverse English, uh, on a large proportion of your shots will find that you're going to miss cue more often because a lot of times that you're hitting the cue ball, uh, you're not going to be hitting it in the center. Where a beginner player is going to be hitting the cue ball, at least intending to hit the cue ball uh, in the center on most of their shots, an advanced player is intending to put English on the ball uh, on just about the majority of his shots. So make sure that you're staying within the limitations of where your tip will allow you to make contact with the ball. I have certainly been guilty of miscuing because I'm putting some excessive amount of English on the ball. As you move up or down the plane of the ball, uh, you will find that you don't have as much room to work with. Where if you're putting a, a shot on that takes into consideration the entire width of the ball, so you're hitting it uh, without any follow or any um, draw, you can put more English on the ball because you have a bigger target area. As you move up and down that ball, you're going to have a reduced target area. So there's times when a shot takes excessive English and that excessive English uh, is causing you to miss cue. If we have a situation like this where we're playing the red ball and we're trying to get on the black ball and our angle takes us this way, so as a result, we put inside English on it to come behind the black ball, the shot looks like this. You can see exactly how much English I had to put on that to get all the way back over here. I think we hit this diamond and came back here. In order for that to happen, you have to put a tremendous amount of English on the ball. And that tremendous amount of English uh, gives you a very small area for error and as a result causes a lot of guys to miss cue. So make sure you're staying within the limitations of the actual ball, uh, but being off just a millimeter will cause you to miss cue on a shot like that. Let's look at the next item. One of the things that drives me nuts when I'm teaching a player something is they see a professional player, maybe one of the best in the world, do something and they think that that's what they should be doing. Um, there are a lot of players who have very bad fundamentals um, who are at the very top of this game. And by imitating uh, their style on a lot of different things, uh, you are costing yourself. These are things that they have adapted to over 30, 40 years in some cases. And if you try to take on their characteristics, a lot of times you're going to get in trouble. So one of the things that I see people doing is they see somebody do something on a video and they think, oh, that's the way I'm supposed to do it. And I'll give you guys an example. Um, Efren Ray is the, the best player on the planet. Uh, maybe not today because he's getting up there in age, but <laughs> certainly was one of the best that ever walked the planet uh, in his prime. Uh, has a habit of taking warm up strokes and then right before he takes the stroke, dropping his cue tip to execute a draw shot. And I see guys try to copy this style and it is a very, very bad idea. Uh, you wanna practice your warm up strokes at the point that you actually want to hit the ball. Do not copy some guy that you see starting here and then ending up shooting here. I actually had people say in comments um, of other videos, uh, yeah, Efren is disguising the type of English that he's putting on the ball by shooting his warm-up stroke at one spot and then shooting at another spot. Um, that's just insanely ridiculous. Um, Efren uh, is smart enough to know that you can't disguise your stroke by positioning the cue at one spot and then shooting at another. We all see exactly where he's hitting the cue ball. 
So um, that's just ins insanity, by the way. Uh, I don't want to call it a stu stupidity. We'll call it insanity. But um, if you see this, what you're dealing with is a lack of information. Uh, Ephraim might be doing it because he is aiming in a specific way. Uh, he may be doing it uh, just out of habit, uh, but it is not a good habit. At least it's not a habit that you should try to copy or develop for yourself. So with your warm-up stroke, warm up at the spot that you actually want to hit the cue ball so that you can hit that spot. Pull is hard enough than to give yourself a moving target, and that's what you're doing anytime you change your shot uh, during your warm-up stroke. The next item we're going to talk about is the same as the previous one, hitting the cue ball at a different spot than where you've taken your warm-up stroke. But this time, it happens by mistake. Uh, you're taking warm-up strokes, you've got that long bridge uh, that's too long, you don't have that solid bridge, uh, you practice your warm-up stroke, but then as a result of being too far from the cue ball, when you take that last warm-up stroke, you actually don't hit the cue ball where you intend to. And not only does it cause you to miss the shot, but it causes you to miss cue at times. So keep in mind that that warm-up stroke is there so that you can find your contact point. And if your contact point during your warm-up strokes is changing during each one of those warm-up strokes, something's not right. Your elbow's out of line, your shoulder's out of line, your shot is out of line, your bridge is out of line. Something is not right. So if you're not coming back to that same spot on each and every one of those warm-up strokes, there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Let's look at the next item. Number 10 on our list is the moving target. Now when I talk about the moving target, I'm, I'm not talking about this. Okay, I never miss cue when I shoot that shot. We're talking about shots where you move the cue, but this time it's not left or right. It is you're lifting the cue off the table. If your cue is not pointing in the direction that is um, equal to the direction you want that ball to go, you've probably done something wrong. Now, there are shots with English that the cue will deflect uh, left or right. So if I had the camera right over there and I shot with a lot of left-hand English, my cue might deflect to the left because it's coming off of this hard item and it's going to uh, drift to the left a little bit during the follow-through. We're not talking about that. Um, I see people do it all the time uh, where they get in line with a shot and then their cue is in the air. Um, I have a family member, I'm not going to mention who, um, actually there's two of them, that up until just a few years ago shot like this all the time. Did not even realize they were doing it. I was scared to be anywhere around them uh, during their shot because the cue tip might end up in my eye. I mean, that's how bad it was. Uh, five minutes after one of them told me he doesn't lift his cue during his shot, he hit the lights over my pool table and actually broke a light. Uh, so people are doing it, they don't even realize they're doing it to them to some kind of follow through. And uh, if your cue is not pointed in the direction um, that the cue ball is going, you're probably doing something wrong. Now you get a bonus item. This is one that everybody knows about. You are simply hitting the ball too hard. This usually happens when guys are braking. First off, if you have a brake cue, it probably has a harder uh, phenolic tip on it, and that uh, phenolic tip does not give you as much room for error as a leather tip that has a lot of grip to it. Uh, so if you're hitting the cue ball too hard, that's going to be reason that you're miscuing. If you are seeing the miscues only during your break, what you need to do is focus on that one item and make sure that you have good fundamentals on your break, that you have a good solid bridge, that you're not lifting the cue off the table, and that you're not trying to hit the balls at 35 miles an hour. First off, you can't, but don't worry about hitting the ball so hard. You guys have seen so many videos where I break and run balls. I make two, three balls on the rack. Uh, I shoot nine ball. I make three, four balls sometimes, and I never hit the ball more than 80% of my capability. So you don't need to hit the ball hard. It is better to have good control and to not miss cue than it is to hit the balls hard. I'm sure you guys can think of some other reasons for miscuing. Let me know in the comments. 
I appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day.